section of 139, 139, never alone. A candle light and blossom, Curtis on the road.
never do this. Nor will he forsake us. Amen? Amen. We will start and sing our final congregation of Psalm page number 268. 268. You say to him, Lord, I believe I have a message from the Lord. It is from you. God be with you. Amen.
something in the Bible. So it is interesting that these verses should follow the Beatitudes. In the Beatitudes, Jesus gives some qualities that ought to be presented in every child of God's life, every citizen of the kingdom life. When we are possessed of these characteristics, we will be a positive influence in the area wherever it might be. Uh, we'll make a difference. Uh, you know, I, I, I have the privilege of my youth to travel all over the Caribbean and some parts of Europe and the United States. And one thing I found out in history, we are, we are the same no matter where we go. Now we may have some little of our issue problems here and there, but for the most part, we that believe the word of God, we have the same standard. When we are living out of the standard of the Lord Jesus in our lives, we will be like salt and like light. That's what he said. He said also, he called us the name of the light. He said, you are the light of the world. Light is an external quality that an able one to see. You know, uh, Remember as a child, that the, the, I don't remember when it was the first street light, but I believe it was in Kamsa. Uh, and then they put that up in the pole. Uh, we got it there. We were uh, little boys, I mean, and just about every evening, uh, till time to go to bed, we would gather on the little light uh, because it was, it, it was new, you see. And so we, were, we used to have the street light. That was the only street light at the time that we had there in the little uh, village. So just as the, and so the day of when many read many news as we read in verse number uh, 14, it says, We are the light of the world, and the city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Now, if you travel to the uh, Holy Land or to Israel, those areas, uh, most of the houses are built out of big wood. I don't want to say they want to use the same concrete block that we use, but um, uh, we went to some of the places there to build cracked stones. Uh, and I said, What? You never see you never see him walk until you go uh, up in those areas. And so they have a they have a rock pit where they would go and they would mine the, 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 the stones and then they take them to the uh, uh, to the mining mill or you know, to the to the mill where they would form shade pick uh, you know, different sizes and blocks. And so most of the houses are built out of these solid lime stone blocks, blocks in stone they have concrete, they are stone. They build the houses and so on. But here you see uh, that they have all the houses built alike. And so, they have got a kind of an almost white limestone. I assume that in the daytime, probably Jesus was preaching this message in the day. And so, he looked over yonder and he saw that sitting on a hill, a thing made out of those white limestone. You know, those white limestone are back then. I don't know if it was the same method that they use that they're using uh, today. In the 21st century, but nevertheless, he looked at that and he said, We are, uh, you know, you, know you, 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 are, you are the city that, sit, that sits on a hill. And sitting on that hill, he says, He said, um, uh, Therefore, you be the light of the world. Everybody who sees you, 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 are, uh, you are seen from near and far because of where you are. And that's what we are, our, our light. Uh, lights, a city that is built on a hill. And so it, 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 it gives out the quality, it gives out uh, that glistering, uh, shining, uh, the quality of thereby people can see. And so, in other words, our testimony will get out wherever we go. Our testimony ought to be heard, ought to be seen. Those around us will see it and they will be able to identify us as Christians. So tonight, I would like to zero in on the idea of us being called Saul and, and share with you the different uses of, of Saul and how important Saul is, how important it was in Jesus' day, and how important it is even now and how it is. So as we look together at these uh, uh, um, information, I pray that your hearts be blessed and be encouraged that you could be more cognizant now of what you are supposed to be or what you are, how you are supposed to act. But first of all, let's look at the description and, and analyze ourselves. <clears throat> Number one, people in general do not realize the importance 
absorb and maintain their life and their health around them. Salt is very important. I know there are a lot of uh, discussion on this matter of salt. We talk to your MD, you or she may tell you, don't use any salt. But you know, our body cannot function without salt. There is a some of the foods that we eat, whether it's the food of berries and vegetables or, or some other thing, they have salt in it and they should. Uh, when we think about sugar, you're thinking about the, 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 the process. When you think about salt, you're thinking about the process. But when I, I remember when I came out of high school and I went working out on the construction field, you know, the, the, the bottom would be hot in the summer. And boy, uh, you would be working and I mean, you would be just drying and I mean, uh, perspiring like a crazy water be running off you. And so they had some salt tablets that they would give you to take. You have to take those salt because your body will settle all of the sodium that it has in it. So they so they require the body with this with that sodium. And so a percentage of us of our body of our bloodstream uh, 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 have salt in it. And so how did this, this amount of salt and so it, it, what it does is ward off sickness, even death. Salt is a sustainer of life in some cases. And for this reason, uh, some people say they give me the sea salt. And why they take the sea salt is because of the uh, processed salt, or the, or the, it helps uh, uh, what we call it, that, uh, that uh, sodium chloride in it. And so this. Is, uh, is in some cases are not too good for the body, not good for the body. And so they said, they, you know, so they, uh, and that's why people they would go for the, 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 the sea salt. Now, when I was a child, uh, my sister would send me out on the base trail to Woodwalkers to walk, and there to go buy salt. They used to sell salt if you had to be cooked by what is this coarse grain salt. And you buy the salt, you take it back, and then they would take a bottle and they would crush it. They, they mash it up with the bottle and they eat cheese and fish or whatever. And then they, they would take it and they put it into the food. Now, the first one, I don't know how they did it, but they, they had a good handle on it. They would just grab the cook. Uh, when they were cooking it, they drop a few of the blocks of salt or grains of salt into the pot and it would be just as a salt because it's just thick. It is a preservative, a preserver. It is it, 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 it costs things to not to spoil. Remember, some of you who go to old school when you get your fish, you may have your refrigerators. You have to they call it corn and if you dry the fish. But before you dry it, you have to saturate it with salt. I mean you put a lot of salt on that and then you hang it out of the on, on, on the line or wherever you hang it for it to dry and that salt will cure it. After that is cured, you can keep that for months. I see that I saw a fella get smacked to the side of what I did. I mean, there is on the lucky spot you had, and then you have on the piece of wood, once that is dry. You see, the salt would, 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 would uh, preserve it. And the salt in scripture is said to be a symbol of a binding covenant also. Right? They used the salt in the Old Testament, even the Sign and seal covenant to make agreement. You buy a piece of land or whatever it is, they seal it with salt. They get it married, they seal it with salt. Um, and the book of Leviticus, chapter number 2, verse 13 said, And every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou, be, shall thou season with salt. That means every sacrifice, the word oblation that means it, with your sacrifice. Season with salt, neither. So thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking and say, be lavish with it. You don't just you don't, you don't use it sparingly. He says, from thy meat offering, in all thy offering, thou shalt offer salt. So three times in this verse, it shows us how important salt is. God honored the salt. There's a reason. Now I remember back in those days. Uh, they had a, a different method of, of mining their salt. They didn't get their salt from the ocean and how we get it today. You know, a lot of people would get the water and, and they would corral it and, and, and 
which was Saul did. Saul is the evidence of grace. In Colossians chapter 4, uh, verse 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Be tactful. You know, a lot of times, uh, I, was just, I, was just, I was telling um, um, uh, 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 an experience that I had when I was a young man in my 20s. I was in the house, I was in my second pursuit, and he met a fellow that he and I had the encounter of this. I had a broken picture back then, I was now 22, 23 years old. I went out of my broken picture one night, came back, and I, uh, he was a house dog, and so that I let him out so he could use the yard while I was gone. And uh, I didn't know he would have run across the road, but he ran across the road, and this taxi cab driver knocked him and killed him. When I got home, I met my wife and the children, and my children all was crying. Man, and then I found out what the problem was, I went after this guy. My intent was when I catch him, what to do with him, I don't know what that would have been. But he was smiling and I was, he wanted to go to the station. You see, uh, 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 what happened there, and him, and by him doing that, he saved me some problems. And he saved myself, and he saved, he saved himself some problems. Because and he was a weak little fellow, he wasn't tall, he wasn't that tall, but he wasn't that tall. And uh, he was a small fellow himself. So I was a, I was a tall, I mean, I was a tall right in half, but I wasn't that, that size. You know, I was a skinny fellow. He was a fat And I was stupid. And so, because of that, you see, let's say I was a Christian. I lost my testimony by going after this man. If I had caught him and beat the smart out of him, how could I? have been an encroachment after that. So we are called Saul because we are supposed to have a preserving ability. Saul wards of rotten and decay. The Lord is the wards of things that will be uh, 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 hurtful and cause us to be able to stand amongst uh, uh, some things that we would not be able to stand had it not been salted. Remember the salt beef? Pour that into the taste of it and cook up. That, now, I don't know what it is today. I think they have salt pot now. Why in those days they had salt beef? It was game in them. And a little, a little, a little wooden jar. Yeah. They salt that down. They pickle that down. Man, then you boil up with some pigeon peas, some dry hump. Mm. You get yourself some corn fish in there. But they soak that down and cook that into rice. They cook it in the oil. Oh, man. Bit by 
I did that our younger generation would thank God for those who still yet have that influence in their lives. It's a penetration also ability. So we penetrate and infiltrate whatever it touches. It's an aggressive substance. You know, I don't know if you ever try to, uh, if you cook a salt and water rice, you can't get it seasoned right anymore. That's the salt and salt. If you cook a pot, a salt and water soup, you can't have more food. Take a simple cup, you can come up with a gallon of water, and you keep on, you keep on trying to dilute and dilute until you get the right taste. But if you cook a pot of wood to a pot of rice salt, man, you can never get that salt with that. You can take you can throw water in it and turn it turn it turn it turn to uh, rice porridge, but it's still gonna be salt. That's the ability of salt. You see, salt was uh, uh, recognized as salt came to this um, uh, experience when he stood by and saw young Stephen stoned to death. It is Stephen's testimony that caused salt. To take the position that he took and had this young man stoned to death. Yeah. Yeah. The apostles were men, were women, uh, the women were their wives, but I mean the, the men, for, for example, they were the men who God had called in their lives, had a rewarding, uh, improving influence upon the world, and said they turned the world upside down. So I believe that we have been called by God to be an active force in this Bahama land. Wherever you may go, let, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let us lift, let us live a life that is glorifying to God. I was talking to one of my friends the other day. Well, yes, well yesterday really. He is uh, he's one of the men that are putting up the barricades and the uh, wives and sick and everything for John that he comes with you tomorrow. And uh, uh, they brought some of the bleachers from Nashville and here and some here. here. I think he has a, I didn't see what was a 2,500 seat capacity there. They brought up a 2,000 seat capacity from Nashville. But they said what they did, instead of charging, they said it, it was open seat. It didn't it 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 no VIP seat. And so they said, so everybody paying the same price, $10. Thy neighbor, 
was not cut, neither was thou washed with water to suffer thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swallowed at all. Salt is new at birth. If Jesus is some of you, you didn't have this experience, that's why you're so weak, that's why you're doing the things that you're doing. Salt is, a, is very important, and it still is. Salt in, in womb is also used to cleanse womb. Then a person was hungry. You see, Christian need to recognize and realize what importance they are in this world. You see, the only thing that is keeping back the power of God's judgment or the, or the hand of God's judgment is the salt. The salty testimony of us. When we move out of the way, then God's wrath will unleash on this world. That's what he said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. With the mystery of iniquity that already worked, only he who led it, the letter of the is taken out of the red Holy Spirit is gone. There will be no more souls in this world. There will be no more Christian influence. Satan will have free course. He will move as he likes to please. So our lives are to be lives that are lives of, of, of godliness, lives of righteousness. You see, so this is what we are. Remember, there is an old style. I say, remember, I don't know if you, if you ever heard it, so you don't want, you know where, you know where the, uh, the salt is in bread. You know why, you know where that came from? Back in the old days, when some of the Roman soldiers were paid in salt. That was their way. For some of the things, what they did, what they did, they were paid in salt. And so, that reason why sometimes they, they, they use that expression, you don't know what is salt. And so, salt is a pleasing uh, uh, ability. Salt brings out the best in our food. I don't care what you say with fresh food. There's nothing like the seasoned food. Yeah. If the doctor tells you to eat fresh food, you eat it. You know, the doctor knows what they're saying. But I can tell you, your fresh food won't taste as good as my salty food. Uh, salt has a way of enhancing the flavor. We have to, um, uh, the soul to live that our lives will enhance the lives of others around us when they see us. You see, look what he says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conversation be as I'm coming to the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. That you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, struggling together for the faith of the gospel. And so Paul said, Listen here. He said, Let your behavior, let your conduct, you see, when we are right, when our conduct as well as our behavior is right, we will influence others. And so we will, our people will see something different in us. And seeing it, they will desire it. You see, salt is a, um, also salt can be detrimental. Salt also has a poisoning effect. Salt can kill. I do not know if you. Uh, we have some uh, scales we call slugs. We used to use salt. Slugs to eat, eat your vegetables. I remember one morning I, I plant, uh, one day I planted some bell peppers. I had some cucumbers and a, a bunch of other stuff, some, some beets. I just, I just took them out of the pot and I put them in the ground. The next morning, I knew just about everything was more down than those slugs. And I, I mean, I, I, I was hurt. But I then I bought this along. Uh, uh, um, snail, of course, snail bait. I was going to this new one with the best people. I thought that was a great job. But then somebody told me to get salt. He throw the salt up there. So now the salt will kill the snail and kill the plant. If you throw the salt on the slugs, it will kill it. It will die. Salt also so it can have a, 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 a detrimental effect. Salt water on the lawn will kill the grass. If you take, if you get the, if you, if you get that, if you get a box of salt right now, you, 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 you can test it. You find a piece of green, uh, uh, you have grass kind of green. You take that box of salt, you just throw it there, and let's stay for a couple of days. And go back and watch it, it's turning brown. The salt will kill it. It has a poison effect. And so, 
Therefore, the scripture says in the book of Judges chapter 9, verse 45, hear what it says. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and took the city, and slew the people that was therein, and beat down the city, and notice this, and sold it with Saul. He threw Saul on the city. But you know what he did? Throw Saul on their land. So they could not farm and produce any agriculture. He used a saw to kill the field with saw by the same token. Then Christianity is not living up to their expectation. They destroyed the community. The saw, we are the saw. When we are not living up to what we are supposed to be, we destroy the environment. He destroyed this, the, 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 the Christian environment. That's why Paul says what he says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Let them out. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's supposed to be different, you see. And so Saul also promotes ability. Saul creates thirst. When you when you use, like I said, that when the food season now you can drink more water. So they will cause you to want to drink water. You see? So, be a salty Christian. Have some word. Promote God's word. Remember that the Lord told us, He said, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. When we are salty in the scriptures, when we live as Christians, we live, when we take the call of Jesus Christ seriously and live right, look right, act right, talk right, walk right, and worship. As we ought to worship the rest of us. I know when I use the word dress right, a lot of people are, you know, a lot of the time they go up, well, I'm a lot of people who dress just as good as Christian. But I don't believe a Christian lady ought to be your leader. I do not believe, I, I believe she should be modest. You see? And that's one of the, uh, not that, not that's not one of the, that's not the reason. But, that, but one of the reasons why I have a problem with dancing in the church is we didn't call it what they call it Christian dancing in the church. We wear these the cloth they call kayan or something like that, that's a soft cloth. They put them and wrap around their body and they, and they move and everything else. And so they, so they dance and they sing the gospel and dance and do that. They say that, that that's just a, a way of worship. Show me that in the Bible. Then you show me that in the Bible, I'll show you where a man lost his head. So these are things that as, as Christians, we, it, it, it is sad, but it is, it, 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 it is true. Our lives ought to promote a hunger for the things of God and not drive people away. And people will say, you talk to them. <laughs> I don't I, 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 I care those Christians that are bad and I don't curse and I don't threaten. I don't gamble. So we are a salt. We need to refrain from certain things in life. We must never give anyone cause to say, if God is Christianity, then I don't want it. We are a cause them to want to be Christian. Because Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see a good work. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. He said, the city that is set on the earth is never to be We let our light be in. Salt has a proven ability. Salt changes nearly everything it touches. Food changes. Health. Instead of one arm, you can go. You have to call to the thermostats, not thermometers. This world is around us. We, we set the pace. We are pace setters. We are the instruments that God used to implement changes to the wicked world. When we exercise that, then we are doing what the word of God commands us to do. And so we see the description and the analysis of the, the, the analytics of Saul. Number two, the dangers of Saul that we need to avoid. We try to apply the language of God. Saul was very valuable in the ancient world. So as I, as I said, you know some of the Roman legions who often paid their wages from Saul. We call it Saluria. S-A-L-U-N, Saluria. We 
this is where the expression came from the old word here, Saul. It was possible for Saul in that day to lose a saber or a sword in it. The sword used then was, as I said, it wasn't taken from the ocean. It was taken from Saul's mind. They did not have the uh, 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 the chemical compound called chlorium, um, 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 called um, sodium um, uh, chloride. It was just a pure salt. The salt had more vet vegetation in it than it had um, uh, uh, the harmful chemicals. And so the salt they used in the ancient world was neither mined from the salt cliffs along the Red Sea, which was seven miles long and several hundred feet high, or it was evaporated. From the Dead Sea water. Either way, it was always mixed with minerals. Therefore, it was much more healthier than the uh, processed salt that we have today. When this salt was exposed to the element, uh, when it touched the earth, the salt lost its saltiness. This is what Jesus meant when he said, If you lose your saltiness, you become good for nothing. And so what they did with that salt then and lose its savory, they would take it and use it like you use a um, uh, limestone. The, 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 the quarry, the limestone. They put it on the path where they had a walk. And it became nothing but a foot uh, for uh, except for a footpath. Because you don't want people to walk on Christianity because of losing the salt. If you lose your saltiness, that will happen. Then be like salt in ancient times come too close to contact with the world, we lose our saltiness. People in the world, they respect Christianity. There are a lot of people that respect Christianity. They may bad mouth you, but they expect, expect you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. So how do I do this? Do they criticize Christianity? When you say faithful, the moment you do something foolish, they say, they didn't hear what they would say. Well, I know you're not losing me. Why would they make that expression that they knew? But they knew. Well, you know why they said that? Because they were trusting you until you showed that you are not trustworthy. Then we get to be more like the world. When we are like the Lord, then we have lost our savory. Too often we allow our wells to get filled with junk. This is what happened. The biblical saints have done with it. One of the wells of Abraham, they threw, they threw filth in it, they threw all kinds of junk in it according to Genesis chapter 26. And it had to be cleaned out. And sometimes that means we have to clean up our wells. When we allow our wells to be filled, Words jump when we are practically useless uh, in the kingdom of God. The world will have a heyday, and lastly, we will go back to it. Saul has a destiny to the fall in ancient times when Saul lost his savior. As I said, it was put on the path of the road. Every Christian in this room needs to understand that when we lose our saltiness. When we cease to function as we ought to, the world will make sport of Christianity. And this is one of the reasons why I do not run down any religion to lost people. No religion. I don't care whether it's the Catholic, the, the, the Christian, the Adventist. I do not join lost people in running down any religion. I'll tell you why. You see, you and I look at them, we know that they are lost. But the lost world is not where they are. All the lost world looking at, they are still worshiping the same God that you and I worship. And when you join them and agree that they are this and they are that, you are destroying the fabric of the Christian testimony. And so you do not join the world in stampeding the Christian community. When this happens, we have become something to be brought under the foot of men. We become content. If we are living for the Lord, men may not like us. There is often a certain respect that they hold highly for us. As long as we let our lives 
the sun is shining. As long as we live like that city that's on a hill, as long as we be like the salt that still retain its saltiness. I do not know about you, but I do not want to wind up being cast out as a vessel or as the salt is salt. I would like in my life to be useful to God as long as I live. I believe you share the same sentiment with me. It says, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, but I keep on my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means that I have preached to others, I myself should be a pastor. And so sometimes we have to we, we have to manipulate our actions, our ways. You see, we have to we have, we have to look long and hard and so the potential. All of our lives, we have the potential to fail. We have the potential to do the wrong thing. None of us. Paul also went on to say, the second section, when you do, uh, 12 and 2, it says, uh, Let the thing in his stand take you less than four. When you consider your life to be, when you want to say that your life is like salt in this world, that your life is like a candle. Set on a hill, not on a bushel. This is a tremendous means that every child of God can have a salty life, can have a life that is influential. God help us to be that man, that woman, that young person. We have seen enough false good, hypocrisy, blue spirit in our world among so called Christians. We do not need to join that. We need to set the right standard. God will help us if we want to do that. Just follow His word. Let us stand for it. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you once again for this great man of God. Thank you for this day, Lord God. We are grateful to you, Lord. How we are a man, a woman, a young person, Lord God, whose life, Lord, improves as a father is precious. Father and our Father, those who are yes and standing, Father, lifting up the standard. I pray, God, that you would give them grace each day to be more salty for you. I pray, God, that that man, that woman, that young person, that that little Lord and Savior, that they may come to trust in you, Lord, so they may be turned to you. Father, have mercy upon us, God, and God is grace. God, help us, God, and our Father, to reach that decision in our way. Help us, God, to be that decision that's not salty. May be a blessing 